In this video, we're going to talk about buffer systems or buffer solutions. We want to define exactly what a buffer is, how does it work, what are the key reactions in buffers, what is the chemistry of a buffer. So, first of all, the definition. A buffer system is a solution, uh, which is a mixture of a weak acid with its conjugate weak base at approximately the same concentration. So we have a weak acid in the same solution with a common ion. In my buffer system that I've chosen, I've chosen a hydrofluoric acid buffer system. I have a 0.5 molar concentration of the weak acid and a 0.5 molar concentration of its conjugate weak base, which is the common ion in this buffer system. Fluoride ion is common to both the acid and, of course, since it's fluoride ion, it's common to itself. So what can what do buffers actually do well buffers are solutions that resist changes in pH when small amounts of strong acid or small amounts of strong base are added to that solution now that's very important to keep pH for certain chemical processes in a very narrow range I would cite your body your metabolism as being one of those chemical systems that needs to stay within a narrow ranges of pH. Uh, your blood is approximately a pH of 7.2. If your blood pH were to all of a sudden go down to 6.6, 6.7, you would get ill. If it persisted at that low pH, you might die. The same thing would happen if your blood pH went from 7.2 to, let's say, 8. It's a much higher concentration of hydroxide ion, which we call alkalosis, which could also make you very sick and possibly die. Actually, changes in the pH of biological systems to that degree would probably kill you. Not being a doctor, I don't actually know that, but I suspect that you would be at the very least tremendously sick. So buffer systems are critically important toward resisting changes in pH when small amounts of strong acid or strong base are added to the buffer solution. So this is going to help you figure out the chemistry. Just remember that acids react with bases and conversely bases react with acids. So if you can remember that acids react with bases and bases react with acids, it's a long way toward understanding the chemistry of buffer solutions. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's add a small amount of strong base to the buffer system that I've proposed up here. So what is the react? Let's make the uh, base that we add sodium hydroxide. You're familiar with sodium hydroxide. It's a strong base. It ionizes or dissociates rather to sodium cation and then hydroxide anion. And it's the hydroxide anion part of the strong base that we actually care about. So uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and look at the hydroxide ion, the strong base. It's going to react with the acid side of the buffer system, the hydrofluoric acid, because bases react with acids. Now this is a big K reaction. It is heavily product favored, and so it effectively goes all the way to products. That makes it a limiting reactant problem. And the limiting reactant is just the component in smallest amount, which happens to be the strong base. So our change is going to be minus 0.10 molar for both our strong base and our hydrofluoric acid, because every time the strong base reacts with hydrofluoric acid, it peels a proton off to make water, which we really don't care about the concentration of that. But every time it the hydroxide ion reacts with the hydrogen ion and the hydrofluoric acid, it releases a fluoride ion. So that's going to be plus 0.1 molar. If we add up our uh, change line to our initial line, we have a little bit more fluoride ion, 0.60 molar. We have a little bit less of our hydrofluoric acid, 
0.40 molar and we have zero molar concentration of our strong base because our buffer system has absorbed the strong base. It's reacted with the strong base. Now we can do an equilibrium uh, calculation with our ice table using these two new concentrations for the hydrofluoric acid and the fluoride ion to figure out our pH. We know that our pH will not have gone up very much as it would have gone up if we'd added the hydroxide to neutral water. If we just added 0.1 molar hydroxide ion to neutral water, the pH would have gone up tremendously. But since we've added it to a buffer, it only goes up a little bit. It goes up a little bit because we've got a little bit more conjugate weak base and we've got a little bit less of our conjugate weak acid. So our buffer system has resisted changes in pH from the addition of a small amount of strong base. Now let's go in the other direction. Let's add a small amount of strong acid to that very same buffer system. What is the key reaction that we're going to have initially? So we might add, let's say, nitric acid, H. NO3. You know that. It's one of our strong acids, one of the seven. It's going to release a proton because it ionizes completely and a nitrate anion. We don't care about the nitrate anion because it's the conjugate base of a strong acid, so it's neutral. However, we care very much about the hydrogen ion. That is the strong acid component of this reaction. So we take our strong acid, which is the hydrogen ion, 0.1 molar. We add it to the weak base side because acids react with bases. And we're going to make a little bit more of our uh, or our weak acid during the course of this. By the way, this is also a big K reaction because we're adding strong acid. The reaction goes effectively all the way to product. So our change, again, is going to be minus 0 0.10 molar, minus 0 0.10 molar, and plus 0 0.10 molar. Every time hydrogen ion reacts with the fluoride ion, it forms a molecule of hydrofluoric acid and it will go all the way to products in that reaction. So at the end of the reaction, initial change final, remember this is not an equilibrium, it's a final concentration initially, uh, and then we have 0 0.50 minus 0.1 or 0. 0.40 molar fluoride ion, our weak base, and then a little bit more, 0 0.60 molar of our hydrofluoric acid. So our buffer, once again, has absorbed the addition of a small amount of strong acid to produce new concentrations of fluoride ion and hydrofluoric acid. We have a little less fluoride ion, a little bit more of our hydrofluoric acid, so the pH will go down a little bit, but nothing close to what it would have gone down had we simply added the strong acid to neutral water. In that case, it would have gone down many points. In this case, just a few tenths of a point. Once again, our buffer system has resisted a change in pH.